Hey everyone, I'm Melanie from Streamline Legal, where we help law firms get the most out of their practice management software. Tonight, we're going down the rabbit hole for sure, people. Um, I really need to stress that we're talking about document automation tonight, and we're talking about how Clio's document automation is a lot more powerful than you guys realize. And um, I have a few caveats before we start. Number one, if you are an attorney, please do not do this yourself. Please hire someone to do it. It is not the highest and best use of your time. Whether you hire someone internally that can learn this and do it for you, that's fantastic. Whether you outsource it to a company like Streamline Legal, that's wonderful too. Whatever approach you use, keep in mind that the longer you sit here coding document templates, um, the less billable hours you're billing and the less new clients you're obtaining. So keep that in mind and please don't get stuck in this rabbit hole with me. Um, number two, in order for this document automation to work, all of the custom fields in Clio that your document uses have to be filled out. So I would highly recommend that you make that part of your process when files are opened or when that information becomes available to put that in Clio right away so that whenever you're ready to do your documents, that information is there and we can get started. So having said that, um, a lot of us think of document automation and we think about how the software can take some information and put it into our document. So for example, if we say, you know, if we're doing an engagement letter and we say our fee, we put into a custom field in Clio that our fee is $5,000 and then we prepare the document, the engagement letter, and it feel, feeds that information from the custom field in Clio into the document and it puts the $5,000 in there for our fee. That's a wonderful tool. Um, and in fact, a lot of uh, software does that. Um, if you're looking at my case or some of the other online document um, practice management softwares, they have that, uh, that feature as well to be able to do that document automation by feeding information into the document. Um, but most of them do not have the conditional logic that we're gonna talk about here. Um, and keep in mind that most of the standalone products also do not have this level of conditional um, logic either. So keep that in mind when you're looking at other products or to trying to decide where you're going to do your document automation. When I say conditional logic, this is what I mean. I mean that in Clio, I want to put in some information and I want the Clio to look at that information and um, co uh, prepare the document accordingly. So for example, if I say, um, you know, here's a custom field in Clio, and if the checkbox is marked off and checked, I want you to put this paragraph in the letter. If the box is not checked, I want you to leave the paragraph out of the letter. That would be a conditional statement. It's an if-then statement. Um, so. I'm going to show you how you can create those in Clio, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we can use these. Because, of course, um, you know, leaving paragraphs out of letters are great, but let's talk about something very, our example we're going to show you is something very, very practical that you'll be able to use in pretty much every document that you create. So I'm going to head over to my screen here, and you'll see tonight I've got Clio on one side, and I've got my case pulled up, and then I've got my Word document on the right-hand side, and this is the document I'm going to use to create my template. And so um, obviously we can write all kinds of things in this template. I'm going to keep it sweet and short and simple to make the point. And then if you guys have any questions, obviously you can reach out to us. But you'll see on my left-hand side, I've got my Clio screen. I've pulled up the matter. Now, in this particular example, we're going to talk about how we can change um, words in our document based on the client's gender. So, for example, in our example here, the client is Melanie Leonard. And I've gone ahead and when I click on Melanie Leonard, you'll see the custom fields that we have under this contact. Now, keep in mind, this is a contact custom field. It's going to follow the contact across Clio no matter how many matters they have. And I went ahead and put in the gender here is female. Now, when I made this custom, custom field, I made it as a pick list. So when I go and create that custom field, I called it a pick list and I put in the options. You can't pick anything other than male or female. Those are the only options I put in there. Now, of course, 
We'll, we can talk about all kinds of other gender options, but for tonight, we're going to focus on male and female. So I went ahead and made a pick list. When I put in that custom field and filled out the information, I selected female. And um, then I'm back in my matter here. And so tonight, we're going to talk about how, based on the client's gender, we can change the wording of our document. So for example, I can say he, or I can say she, or I can say her, or I can say him. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you how to code tonight. And so it's helpful if I have my Clio opened up to separate tabs. Number one is my matter. Um, the second place I want to go to is under settings. If you click on documents, this is where we're going to find our codes, our merge codes for putting into our document. So here I can pick whatever case I want as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up that same case that I have on the other screen. And it's going to show me for each piece of information, what is the code that I need to put in my Word document for this to work. And so as I scroll through, there are a ton of codes. Don't get lost in the codes, okay? If you, um, you can simply do a control F or depending on what kind of computer you're on. Um, and I can find, and I'm going to look for the word gender because that's what I named the field. And you'll see right away, I've got my matter client custom field gender. So this is the field that's spitting out female for Melanie Leonard, okay? So I'm going to need that field and we're going to come back to that in just a moment. The next tab I'd recommend that you open is um, under documents. When we click on documents in Clio and then we want to click on templates, this is where we're going to store that template once we have it created, okay? So let's head over to our Word document. And now, of course, there are different versions of Word. I'm working on a Mac here. Um, so please do keep in mind that your buttons may be in different places, so you may have to find them, um, but they will be named um, the same. And so here, um, in, again, if I just needed to fill in the information, if I just wanted to say, what is the client's gender, then I could just take my field from over here on the Clio screen, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it right here. And now, we'll see this in just a minute, I'll demonstrate it, but when I save this template in Clio and I run it through in the matter, you'll see it's going to spit out the word female right there, right? It's going to fill in the information. But again, what we're looking for is something more complex. We're looking for that conditional logic. So in order to make that happen, I'm going to come over here to my insert menu in Word. And on the left hand side here, I have the option to insert a field. And so I'm going to click on that. And in particular, the type of field that I'm looking for is an if then statement. So I'm going to scroll down here to the I section and I'm going to find if. And it tells me how to write my statement right here. It says if expression number one, then put in the operator, in our case it's going to be equals, expression number two, then spit out the true text, if not then spit out the false text. Now I will include in the notes to this video a link to Clio's help page where they do walk you through this as well. Now um, keep in mind there are some typos in this article, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but it can be a very good guide to help you um, with what we're doing here in addition to this video. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to select an if field, and I'm going to say, so in our case, if the client's gender equals male, whoops, sorry, typing too fast, then put in him. Otherwise, put in her. Now, keep in mind, this has to include quotes. Every field has to be in a quote, or not even field, every, everything has to be in a quote. So I'm going to go through and put in these quotes. Now, of course, this is just so that we can think this through in our mind. These are not the actual fields. We're going to put those in in just a moment. So if the client's gender equals male, I want the program to put in the word him. Otherwise, I want it to put in the word her. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, it's going to stick it into my document. It, we can't see the code right now. 
we have to right click on it and say toggle field codes so that we can see what it put in there. Okay, and so this is what it put in. It put in this bracket, if client's gender equals male, say him, otherwise say her in the document. Um, so, and, and then with this coding. So what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and put in the actual code from Clio for client's gender. It's not gonna recognize just my letters. So I'm gonna go back over here onto my um, fields page and I find the actual field and I'm going to copy and paste it right on top of where I put my little note here. And when I do that, it adds an extra space, so I'm gonna backspace it here. Now we've got our code. So if the matter client custom field dot gender, that's the code that I got out of Clio, equals male, then put in the word him. Otherwise, put in the word her. You know what, I missed a quote right here. That missing a quote, by the way, can mess up the whole thing. So you do have to make sure that this isn't a quote, this isn't a quote, this isn't a quote, and this isn't a quote, or else it won't work. So what we're gonna do now is we've got our field in there. And of course, we're imagining this is within a paragraph of text, right? Um, that I won't go ahead and write right now. But we're gonna go ahead and save this as a template. So I'm just saving my Word document, right? It's just a regular Word document I'm saving. Now I'm gonna go over to Clio and go to my document section. And I'm going to go to the template section and I'm going to upload this template I just created on the right hand side. So I'm going to add a template and it's going to be called test. You can put a document category if you want, but for this purpose, we're just going to upload it here. So now we've got my test document right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my matter and I'm going to run that template in the matter. So I'm going to go to documents. And I'm going to, of course, make sure you're in the Clio section. If you have any other integrations, it has to be in the Clio section. I'm going to say new document from template. And it's going to give me a choice of all these different templates. I'm going to choose my test one, of course. And we can spit it out as a PDF or as a Word document. I'm going to show you both right now. And we're going to click on create. It'll take a second. It'll pop up onto the screen saying that it's done. Um, and by the way, well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, I have a message saying that it's done. I don't see it here, of course, because I have to refresh the screen or switch to file view in order to see it. And you'll see now that it's spit it out as a Word document and as a PDF. So let's take a look at the PDF first. When this PDF downloads and pops up on our screen, we'll see that right away, it, for our first field, it filled in the information, right? We had female was what we were filling in from our, just our plain field filling in the information. Then it spit out her because it read this code here. If the client gender equals male, then put him, but you'll remember in Clio, I marked myself as a female. And so it spit out her. And so here we have the results in the PDF. Now, the only problem is a PDF, we can't edit it, right? So if there were other things that we wanted to edit in that document, a PDF is probably not going to be a very good output for us. So instead, I would recommend that you use the Word document. So I'm going to open up that document next. And once that downloads, we'll open it up. Now, there is a trick I will tell you with respect to Word documents. Whenever you do a Word document that has conditional fields, Please do highlight, select all, select the whole document, right click on it and say update field because that's the only way you're going to get the correct results every single time. So again, we'll see here the same thing happened, right? Female came out when it was just feeding in the information out of the field. But once we put it into that conditional statement, it spit out her because it saw that the gender was um, not male, it was female, and so that's why it spit out her. So please keep this in mind as you're creating your document templates. The really excellent thing that this does is it allows us to not have to have so many templates. We don't have to have a template for multiple defendants because we can code our documents that way. 
We don't have to have a template for a him or a her or go through the document and change it every time. Um, this is really powerful stuff. And once you start thinking of the different ways that you can use it, it's very, very helpful. I can have one template whether I represent the plaintiff or the defendant. All I need is a custom field that indicates what party I'm representing and it, Clio can fill out the document appropriately. So really, really powerful stuff. And I hope that this helps you in venturing forward into your document automation. Again, if you are an attorney, please do not do this as a, um, <laughs> as a practice. Uh, it is not the highest and best use of your time, but it will bring a lot of value to your firm. So please do find people that can do this for you, whether they're in-house or outsourced. And of course, we're happy to be one of those people. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for joining me tonight.